This video is made possible by Second Call Defense. Second Call Defense provides immediate, upfront legal protection for a member who is forced to use any legal weapon for self-defense. So protect yourself today with Second Call Defense. I did. You'll find the link in the description. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. Thank you very much. I am the gun guy. I appreciate you watching and enjoying my videos. I hope that you continue doing that and keep supporting the channel. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I also urge you to check us out in these alternative locations because YouTube can be very odd and sometimes delete things where Rumble and BitChute and these other places will not. Also, check out the Gun Guy TV Firearms Podcast. It's an audio podcast you can find on your favorite podcast player. It's even on Amazon Music, among other places. Okay, what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to try to answer the question without answering the question, which is, what's the best gun for seniors to have for home defense? And every time I see a title on an article like that, it boils down to one gun or the other. I can't do that for you because... What I'm going to do is give you some things to think about, because buying a gun is a very individual decision. It's as individual as the clothes you wear, the shoes you wear, the car you drive, the house you live in, and so on. But let's dispense with a couple of things right away. First of all, not all seniors are equal in, in the sense of physically or whatever. I'm a senior citizen, okay? And as a senior citizen, I'm still physically capable. I can use any firearm I want. I don't have any of the infirmities that some seniors have. I'm also a gun enthusiast and I love to hunt and I've been shooting my whole life. So as far as a home defense gun, the choices are wide open to me. I can pick whichever one I like depending on where I live and what, that, what firearm suits that particular environment and my needs. A lot of seniors are like me. And then there are a lot of seniors that are not like me. They have some infirmities. They might have a lot of arthritis. They could be uh, very weak in the shoulders and the arms and the hands. And they may be people who never cared to have a gun their entire lives, and now they want one because they're concerned that society has gone down the tubes, which it kind of has, and they want to make sure that they're safe. They don't think that the police and the government is going to be able to keep them safe anymore. I totally get it. It, it, but the answer to the question is different depending on which group we're talking about. So I'm going to dispense with the folks that are like me, and I'm just going to talk about the folks who are maybe have weak shoulders, weak arms, maybe they have some hand strength issues, or they have heavy arthritis or whatever, and they want to have a gun for home defense. The advice I generally hear people getting, because they'll come to me to learn how to shoot, and they'll tell me, oh yeah, the clerk told me to buy a revolver, or the clerk told me to buy this, or the clerk told me to buy that. Okay, let's talk about that. First of all, most of these folks are interested in a handgun, and I'm just going to say that I'm not so sure a handgun is always the best defense tool for home defense. You don't have to conceal it. It's for home defense. And unless you're working your way around corners or whatever, a long gun might be better if you're just going to go to your master bedroom, get on the other side of the bed away from the door, and shoot anything that comes through the door that doesn't belong while you're on the phone with the cops. A long gun might be a better choice. But that's it. Let's look at handguns just the same. Folks that have hand problems or strength problems oftentimes will not buy a semi-automatic firearm because there's a few things you have to do that require dexterity and good strong fingers. One is loading the magazine. Now you can get magazine loaders that will help you, but nevertheless it's still kind of tough unless you have the hand strength. Even once you get the magazine loaded, you have to rack the slide to put a round in the chamber. And so you have to have the strength to pull the slide back and let it go. Whether you do it this way or you slingshot it or whatever you do, you still have to have the strength to do that. And if you don't have the strength to fight that spring to pull, pull the slide all the way back and then let it go, then that type of gun is not going to work for you unless you want to take the time and go to the effort to develop that level of hand strength. So a lot of times, gun store clerks will say to somebody, don't buy that because... First of all, it's kind of busy. There's a lot going on with it. There's safeties and other things on these things sometimes and different buttons you got to push and levers you got to understand what they are. And it's just more complex. They'll say, well, get a revolver. It's simpler and it doesn't require the same hand strength that that gun does. <coughs> so before I look at revolvers, the other piece of advice I've heard older people get is you're having trouble with that big semi-auto, so get a little one. 
Okay, I rolled my eyes a little bit there for a reason. The problem with it is if you have trouble loading the magazine for the big semi-auto, you're going to have trouble loading the magazine for the little semi-auto. And that's that's just is what it is. So that problem hasn't gone away. If you have trouble racking the slide on the big gun, you're probably going to have trouble racking the slide on the little one because you got less to grab and the spring is still very strong. So those two problems didn't go away. And the busyness of the gun, the slide stop on the slide and maybe a safety if it's got one and all this other stuff, that remains the same. So all you've done is you've made the gun smaller. It is a fact that shooting little guns is accurately and well is a lot harder than shooting big guns. The difference would be that if you have a big gun and your shoulders and arms are weak, you have to hold it out in front of you in order to work and you're holding it out there in empty space. With a little gun, it's a little easier to hold out in empty space, but everything else is still a problem. So people will say, get a revolver. So they'll get a revolver because it's really easy. The only thing you have to know how to do is swing the cylinder out, load it, and swing the cylinder out to empty it. And that's it. Other than that, it's point and click. Point it, press the trigger, bang. And it'll go bang as many times as there are rounds in the in the cylinder every time it turns around. So if it's a six shot or seven shot revolver or five shot revolver, it's gonna go bang that many times. Well, there are some problems for older folks with weak hands and weak shoulders and weak arms when it comes to revolvers that a lot of times people don't want to address. One big one is that revolvers tend to be steel completely. There are some that are partially polymer, but a lot of them, like this one, are steel guns and they're heavy. So if you got to hold it out in front of you to use it, that requires some strength in shoulders and arms to be able to hold that gun out there for any length of time. A lot of older folks don't have the strength to do that. And so they'll be advised, get a little gun. <laughs> same problem. Little ones are harder to shoot than big ones. The, everything else remains the same as far as the issues. The only difference is it's smaller. It's harder to see the sights because they're smaller. There's a shorter sight radius, so it's harder to shoot accurately. And when the thing goes off, it really, really, really kicks, okay? as opposed to the big heavy one, which will moderate that recoil a little bit. The other problem with revolvers is if folks don't have the hand strength to rack the slide and the finger strength to load the mag, they probably don't have the finger strength to defeat the 12 or 13 pound trigger press of a double action revolver. It's long, it's heavy, and so they won't do it. I should know, I've been a firearms instructor for two decades and change, and I've taught a lot of these people how to shoot. And so what they do is they show up at the range and they'll use their off hand to cock the hammer. But notice what I did. Notice that my finger is still on the trigger. And see the problem? That's what they do, and they end up launching rounds. You try to get them to take their finger off the trigger while they're doing it, but the problem with that is that they have weak hands. And this finger is part of their grip on the gun. So if I peel this finger off, now they have a three-finger grip on the gun. And they only have a three-finger grip because now they're trying to cock the hammer with that thumb. And see what happens with the muzzle watch. That, I'm just doing that myself. I'm not even trying to do that. My grip is doing that. But think about an older person with a weak hand. Now what happens is this is going all over the place. The muzzle's everywhere. Generally what they'll do is pull it in close to them and do it, and the muzzle's still everywhere. Or they'll pull it in close to them, keep their finger on the trigger, and, and get it with the other thumb. There's all kinds of problems associated with this, and I've seen these folks launch negligent discharges downrange multiple times. I've stopped most of them, but every once in a while they're a little quicker than I am, okay? That's not, it's, it's dangerous on the range, but it just goes and hits the backstop. It doesn't hurt anybody. But if they're trying to use it to defend themselves and they're scared and they're nervous and they got a hit of adrenaline and they're doing this and they have all these hand problems, that's a recipe for firing when they don't want to. That's a recipe for not hitting the bad guy and having around miss the bad guy and continue down range and kill or injure an innocent person, perhaps in the next apartment, perhaps in the next condo, perhaps in the next room. So I'm not sold on the idea that the revolver is the be all and end all answer for older people who have arthritic hands or weak hands or weak shoulders. Can either of these work? Yeah, sure. It depends and that's my point. But if, you, if neither of these work, then you, now we're looking at long guns, aren't we? So let's look at long guns and some long gun options here. I, the, the other piece of advice I hear all the time is get a shotgun. Get a pump shotgun. Get that pump 12-gauge shotgun. Well, there's one. That's a Mossberg 500. It's lighter than most because it has an aluminum receiver, but it's still pretty heavy for a, for a senior citizen. And if they have to mount it and hold it out there, 
that's pretty stinking heavy. The other thing is that when this goes off, it really has a heavy recoil. Boom! You know, 12, 13 pounds of recoils thumping your shoulder all at once. And then you have to have the manual of arms that, and the ability to know that you got to rack that each time and still control the weapon. That's a lot to ask for somebody that isn't a gun person and they just want it for home defense. It's going to be painful when they go to the range and so they're never going to practice with it because it hurts. Oh, it'll make them feel good that it's leaning in the corner, but they'll never be able to use it to defend themselves effectively. And so that's not a great answer for the type of person we're talking about. Again, if we're talking about a senior who's interested in shotgunning or they like to go bird hunting and they're used to shooting shotguns, maybe it's a great choice, but for others, not. I've also heard people tell seniors, get an AR because the AR is America's rifle and it's the best one. It's the best one for home defense. Maybe not. They can be light. They can also be very heavy. And even the light ones for a senior citizen are very heavy. Again, you've got to mount it and you've got to hold it there. There are some positives to long guns that you don't get out of handguns. First of all, there's one point of contact with a handgun and you're holding it out in space. That's why they're difficult to shoot. They're short, they're small, and you have to hold it out there. You only have one point of contact. That's your hands with the grip. That's it. With a long gun, you have four points of contact. You have the contact with the forward part of the grip. You have your shooting hand contact. You have the contact with your shoulder and your cheek weld. And you're pulling the gun back into your shoulder, and that's what keeps it stable. But if it's too heavy for you to hold out there, it's not a good choice. The other thing about ARs, frankly, is they're very intimidating if you're not used to them because there's a lot of switches and bumps and bruises and you know little knobs and stuff. You gotta know what they do. Well, again, you're not talking about a gun person. You're talking about a senior who never wanted a gun in the first place and only wants one now because they're scared. So you wanna get them something simpler. So I had one dr uh, clerk say, well, don't get an AR, get a, get a Mini-14. Well, the problem with that is they're, oh, I almost dropped an AR there, is they're steel and they're heavy. This one's stainless steel. It's a heavy gun. Uh, this one is actually heavier than the AR that I just had. Are they simple in operation? Yes, but you still have to load the magazine. And if you don't have the finger strength to do it, then the gun doesn't work. Likewise, you might look at uh, something lighter if you can load the magazine, a lighter gun would be the little PC carbine. This is a 9mm one. They make them in 40. This thing has very little recoil. It's 9mm, which is excellent, particularly out of a longer barrel. 9mm doesn't benefit as much out of a longer barrel as something like a 357 Magnum would, but it does benefit a little bit. And the magazines are simple to load if you can do it and get a magazine loader, and the gun is simple to use. And you can do like I did. You can put a little laser and light on the front if you want, and you can put a little micro red dot on it. And it's very simple to go, that's it. This does not require a lot of strength. And this is something you can do while the gun's pulled up against your shoulder and let go. Most people have the strength to do that. It doesn't necessarily require finger strength. It just requires hooking your finger around it and pulling it back with your arm. So they can generally do that with this gun. If they can't load the mag though, it won't work. If they can load the mag, this is probably an excellent choice because it's in a center fire pistol cartridge, which is plenty sufficient for home defense. All right, now I've gone through a few there for you and I've given you some things to think about. Let me talk about somebody who's very, very old and crippled up. Walking with a walker, lots of arthritis, weak shoulders, weak hands. Um, weak arms. We're talking about my elderly mother. And again, I'm a senior citizen, so you can imagine, right? If she wanted a gun, and she has mentioned it, she was talking about a handgun, and I said, no, nah, I don't think so, Mom. I don't think you're going to be able to do it for these reasons. We can try it. But then I, you know, was with her with some handguns, and she said, no, nah, I can't pick them up. I can't hold them. They're too heavy. We bought her a study Bible. She said it was too heavy for her to read, too heavy for her to hold up. So she can't hold up a study Bible. She can't hold up a handgun. However, something like this might be better for someone that's in that particular situation. This is a very, very light little rifle. It's a 22 caliber rifle, and people will say, 22, that's not big enough. Okay, look, I don't know anybody hit solidly four or five times with a 22 that's going to be interested in doing much of anything other than getting to a hospital. Would I advise a Marine or a soldier to take it to war? No. Would I advise a police officer, a security officer, to make it their primary rifle? No, not even their secondary rifle. Okay, but we're talking about an elderly person defending themselves in their home. This is a Marlin Model 60, 
And one of the reasons I like it is unlike the 1022, it does not have a magazine that is difficult to load. Like it has a rotary magazine, the 1022, but it's still difficult to get the rounds in it. This one has a little tubular magazine. You just slide the tube out. Everybody's seen these. And you drop the rounds through the little hole. Count to 14, you're done. It holds 14 rounds of 22 long rifle. Put the tube back in, push it down. It's very easy to push down when the rounds are in there. Line it up, close it up. Now you've got 14 shots. And again, it's very easy to just pull back and let go. Now there's nothing in it, so I've got to push the little button underneath. Now, if you put a little micro red dot on the top of it, or you put a very light uh, little green laser on it, now all the elderly person has to do is put the green laser, they don't even have to have a cheek weld, put the green laser on the bad guy and press the trigger until one of three things happens. The bad guy goes down, the bad guy runs away, or the gun runs dry. Now, the truth is, in these situations, when guns start going off, Bad guys scatter like, like cockroaches. They're out of there as quickly as they can. One of them gets hit and falls. The other ones don't even remember that dude's name. That guy? I don't know who. That, not my homie. I don't know that dude. They're out of there. So in those instances, perhaps something like this might be worth considering. All right. Now, is there an ideal answer? No. And I think that was the point of the video. I don't have the best gun for seniors for you. Being a senior myself, I can tell you that it's going to be different depending on who the senior is and what their capabilities are, what their knowledge base is, what their willingness to go to the range is. But here's the other thing I would consider is whatever gun the senior buys, it should be fun to shoot. Because if it's fun to shoot, they'll go to the range and practice with it. If it's not fun to shoot, if it's painful, if it's loud, if it's disturbing, if it's, if it's hard to hold up, if any of those things they will not go to the range and practice with it, which means it's a pointless thing to own. It's not a magic talisman. A gun is not a magic talisman that will keep you safe. You have to practice with it. So it must be something that's fun to shoot. Sometimes the little semi-automatic 22 rifle is the ticket for that reason. Or the little Ruger PC carbine that doesn't have any recoil. Maybe that's the way to go if they can load the magazine. So those are some things for you to think about. Hopefully this video helps. If you have other questions about it, or if you have comments you think I'm all wet, just let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week, and wherever you go, whatever you do, be safe.